Hey everybody, Jay here and welcome to another Drum Yoga for YouTube lesson. This is our second week and thank you to all the new subscribers. I received some really wonderful emails last week after uh, our first lesson and thank you very much everybody. Today we're going to continue from where we left off last week. We're going to do about four stretches, basic stretches, but they're some of my favorites. They're going to really feel good and you're going to practice these every day. And if you haven't, if you've never stretched before you've played and you've never stretched or you've never even tried anything like this, uh, give it a shot. I'm telling you, you're going to like it. As far as a drummer, stretching, it goes hand in hand. Everything we want to do behind the drum set, we want to use less energy but have maximum efficiency. We want to flow. We want to move better. We want our muscles to work better. And the only way to really do that is conditioning them with muscle memory, stretching them with flexibility and yoga exercises and building our muscle, our strength. I'm not talking about crazy weights or anything. Easy things, natural resistance, dynamic tension, moderately. Uh, but today, again, we're going to do a couple of stretches. We're going to continue from where we left off last week. And then we're going to sit down and we're going to continue with foundational drumming, evaluating our, our hands, the way they move, uh, investigating our weak hand today. For me, my left hand is always my weak hand. And you're only going to be as good as you are with that hand, as far as your right hand. Um, so again, go grab a glass of water, just some simple stretches today, and I'll see you on my yoga mat in just a second, okay? Thanks. Last week we did some nice stretches. Today we're going to do some basic stretches again. Uh, the stretches we're going to do today are warrior, warrior one, reverse warrior, and then we're going to end with uh, ostrich. Uh, I'm going to do all these with you. We'll do them left and we'll right. And at home, it would be good if you did it left and did it right and you hold them. You know your own body. You know where you are and how flexible you are. Only go as far as you feel comfortable with and only hold them for as long as you feel comfortable with for right now. Okay, we're just warming up our bodies and getting them used to something different. Okay, before we even start, just come right over, right under, follow along with me, right over. Right under, right over, right under, okay? Do a couple of little circles. Just want to open up our shoulders, warm them up a little bit. Come forward a little, okay? Let's just bring our knees up a couple of times, just a few times, just loosening up, warming up our bodies, getting our blood moving a little bit. You never want to sit behind your pad set or your drum set and, and practice cold. You never want to do yoga cold. Come on, turn side to side. Uh, you always want to warm yourself up just a little bit. All right. Okay. All right. Good. Good deal. Good deal. Stand. Feet, hips length, hips width apart. Nice shoulders. Relax them back and them back. Just take a couple of breaths in through your nose with me and out through your, your mouth. Okay. In. Out. In through your nose. Out through your mouth. In through your nose. And out through your mouth. All right. Open your stance up just a little. Just maybe a little past shoulder's length. We're going to just do a nice forward fold to start. Bring your arms straight up above your head. You can, again, you can triangle your hands or keep them flat out in front of you. Whatever you feel like doing, is, it's up to you, your choice, okay? Let me take this off. Okay, so again, bring your arms up in front of, over, over your head. And now looking straight at me, let me turn just so I'm directly at you. Looking straight at me, we're gonna bend above our waist. We're not bending, remember, I, remember I told you last week, it's not with our hips. It's, it's not pushing back. You're standing with your stomach just a little tense, your buttocks kind of tucked in, and you're bending above your waist, okay? Bring it up and come down looking at me, looking at me, looking at me, looking at me. Now look at the floor, look at the floor, and now look at your feet behind you and start looking behind you and relax your entire body. You'll feel this, keep your legs straight, You'll feel this pulling behind your legs, in your calves, behind your knees. You'll feel this up on your shoulders and your backs. We're just totally opening up our body, getting your spine open. 
Now slowly start coming up out of this, just leaving everything hanging. Slowly come up. Nice and slow. Nice and slow. Let your shoulders come back naturally. Bring your head up. Fix your glasses if you wear them. <laughs> All right. That's great, man. That feels good. Again, bring your hands up and just go back just a little bit. Just a little. Come forward. And bring your arms down. All right. So I said warrior, warrior one, reverse warrior, and ostrich. So the best way for you to do this is let me do the pose. Let me get my wire out of, way, out of the way so we don't have a embarrassing stumbling accident here. So what we're going to do here is warrior, warrior. All right. I'll do the pose first and you go after me and follow it. That's the best way for you to see it and understand it. Rather than trying to do it exactly with me, let me do the pose. I'll give you time. Then you do it. Okay. So just standing from this position, we're going to be bringing our arms up as we step out in this position in one motion. With your right leg, you're going to step forward. Okay. You're going to lean down. Okay. And you're going to keep your foot kind of on a 45 degree angle with your heel flat in the back. Now, as you progress with this, you're going to really want to get your stance wider. So right now, this feels good for me. So I'll stay here. Your hips are straight. Your arms are going to be up in the air. This is warrior one. Okay. So I'm going to step into this pose. Here we go. Ready? Warrior one. Go ahead. You're looking forward. Now what we're going to do is warrior two. You're turning your body. You don't want your arms like this. You don't want your arms like this. You want your arms even and relax them down and you're still looking forward. This is warrior two. Hold that pose. Hold that pose. Now we're going to reverse warrior. You come back. Hold. Come back to warrior two. It's always good when you have a mirror and you can adjust your arms looking at them in the beginning. Keep your head forward. Now you're going to turn your body into warrior one or just warrior with your arms up. Now from here, you're going to bring your arms behind you and into a reverse arm clasp. You pull your shoulders back. This is a simple pose. It looks tough, but it's, it's, it's pretty simple. From here, you want your right shoulder to go inside your right leg. And we're just coming down like this forward. And you're bringing your arms up behind you like this and relaxing. And hold. Come up slowly. Release your arms. And step back. One cycle. We're going to do this side and that's it. Then we're going to get behind the pad set again. Pretty cool, right? Feels good. You do these stretches every day. I'm telling you, you'll feel stronger. You'll have more energy. Your drumming is going to be more focused, more precise. It's going to be crisp. You're going to use less energy. I'm telling you. So one motion, we're going to step forward with our left leg and we're going to bring our arms up. We're going to go into warrior. Okay. Let me get back a little because I like a wider stance. I'm also six foot two. So ready? Go. Step forward. You're in this pose. Adjust yourself. Don't worry about it. You can move around and get, make sure you got your positioning right. I'm doing it right now. Your hips are straight. Your heel is down. You're feeling it behind the calf. Really reach up. Now we're going to bring our arms down. We're going to turn our chest out, but we're going to keep our head forward into warrior two. I'm going to look. Okay. I'm making sure my arms are even. I got my mirror. I know my foot wasn't pointed forward. I just adjusted. Now from here, reverse warrior. I like to turn my hand up and bring it up. Drop this one on the back of my thigh. And I look at my hand. Some people look behind them. I don't do that. I look up. But you can. You can look behind you like this. As you're doing it, it's a good stretch for your neck. I get a little vertigo in some positions, honestly. All right. So come back to warrior two. Okay, from here, we're going to go back to warrior one. 
You're going to turn and bring it up. Don't forget to breathe. Now bring your arms behind you. Clasp your hands together. Now your left shoulder is going to be inside your left leg. Come on down and let your arms come up. And now you're looking behind you and you're bringing your arms up as far as you can and as comfortably as you can. Don't overexert yourself. If you can only stand a short distance, if you can only bend, if you can only hold the pose for two seconds, it's better than none. And now come up out of this slope. Let your arms out, step out of it. Come back to center. Breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. Now you notice what I just said, even if you can only hold these for a second, a few seconds, if you can only get your leg here and you can only stand like this for now, if that's all you can do, it's better than not doing it. There is no argument better health, better physical and mental condition is better life. Better life is better drumming. End of story. I'll see you behind the pad set in just a second. Okay. Thanks. Hey everybody. Welcome back. We're going to continue right now with foundational drumming. Last week we were working in French grip. We were doing the thumb and forefinger exercise. We were doing a three phase grip shift exercise, uh, assessing how our hands are moving. As drummers, we want nice fluid motion around the kit. Got to have nice muscle memory, good muscle development and control for this. Today, we're going to continue with a few exercises. Uh, today's exercise is going to be one is going to be a flip grip exercise. And this is to evaluate your dominant weak hand. The reason I say dominant weak hand is because you cannot play as fast. You can't play faster than your weak hand. Okay. Simple. I'm a righty drummer. My weak hand is my left hand. So I can't play faster than this hand. So what does that do to this hand? It inhibits my right hand. It inhibits my strong hand. So it in turn does make my good strong hand kind of a weak hand, but this is the dominant weak hand. This is the issue right here. So what we're going to do today, the, a few of the problems is, is we're just not used to using our weak hand as much as our right hand. I'm not getting into right brain, left brain or anything like that. I'm talking about what you've been doing since you've been a little kid playing with crayons. It's always been about the right hand for me or maybe the left hand for you. Anyway, I'm going to say right hand for conversation's sake. So my strong hand, my right hand, I've been favoring all my life. I brush my teeth with it. I turn keys with it. I unlock doors with it. I turn doorknobs with it, open cans, open everything, do everything with it. Okay. Even lead in drum playing. But if you first off start brushing your teeth with your weak hand, turning doorknobs, unlocking doors, you're going to start using your right hand. I'm sorry, your left hand in ways that you normally don't. So you want to make it familiar with things that it's not familiar with. That's one thing you can do. But a really great exercise is called a reverse grip exercise or a flip grip exercise. So putting your arms at your side, coming up in a nice relaxed German position. Okay. Sit here, tap it out a couple of times, just so the sticks really rest and fall into place. Nice. Okay. In that position, flip your grip over. The first thing you want to do is look at your fingers. You want to make sure your fingers in your left hand mirror your fingers in your right hand. Okay. You want to make sure the stick is laying in the right place and it's sitting in the right place. The next thing you want to do is assess the motion from this, from this sitting, from this position, just move your right hand or your strong hand, your main hand up and down a few times, and you will notice a nice straight motion with that hand. Okay. Now do that with your weak hand. Come up. I feel a whole lot of oddity in there and some strain in the muscle in there myself. Now, when I was nine years old, I did fall out of a tree and break my wrist. So I'll attribute that. I'll, I'll, I'll take some of that into consideration and, and say, I might have a slight issue with my left hand because of that. 
It's not an excuse for me. There's finger techniques, bounce, everything. I can get past that. But we still want to assess the movement of our wrists and understand them. So, once again, from a relaxed German position, just get the sticks in your hand, right? Turn your grip over, look at your fingers. Step one, match your fingers up, okay? Step two, just a single bounce. Understand, look at your wrist, look at the motion it's making. Look at it, no bounce, no bounce. You're holding the stick tight, yeah, not tight, but you're keeping your fingers rested on the stick. Just watch the motion of your wrist, the direction of the stick. Make sure it's not going like this. Make sure it's not going like this. You want it nice and straight from this position. Think, it's just your grip turned over. So it should still be pretty much the same. And then do the same thing with your weak hand. Do this every single day, a couple of minutes a day. Slow, slow, slow. Check it out. You don't even have to have a stick in your hand, okay? You can just really start getting used to this odd motion with your hand upside down. Now what happens when you do this for a few minutes and you come back to your position, all of a sudden, your weak hand feels a lot better. And I just did that for about a minute, minute and a half, okay? Our second exercise is a continuation in the French grip, okay? Last week, we were bouncing with our thumb and forefinger and our hands open. This week, our exercise is going to be going through each finger in a bounce. You're going to bounce with your thumb and forefinger. You're going to bounce now with your middle finger, okay, and your thumb and forefinger. Now, just your ring finger, then your pinky finger, okay? All right, so that's all you want to do. At the end of the video, we're going to have a close-up of each of these grip positions for you with the title and description underneath them. So make sure at the end of the video, you watch it fully to the credits at the end, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So that's your next exercise. It's going to be again in the French grip, and just slowly, first your thumb and forefinger, thumb and middle, thumb and ring, thumb and pinky, whole hand. That's our second exercise for today. Our third exercise is, we did the full grip. Our third exercise is going to be a finger technique to build up in German grip. Now, when you're playing in French grip, the fingers are not a problem. But when you come all the way into German grip, it, it, it gets really weird feeling. You know, you can't get that kind of motion out of it. That's why we have relaxed American, because you can kind of get, let's call it the best of both worlds, okay? But in German, to really build your fingers up in German so you can get that nice motion, just going, there's a really great tip, Dom Famulero tip, all right? Take your stick, bring it down here to about, right about here. You want to find a different fulcrum. Extend your arm out and practice just like this. Seriously, okay? Now, if you're having a problem with it, if the stick's too heavy, you know, you can choke back up on it a little bit. If the stick's too light, bring it forward. But find that nice balance point and work on this. Okay? So let's do a quick recap and we'll have the close-ups. Our first exercise was a flip grip exercise, which was turning your hands from a nice relaxed German position over, assessing your fingers, okay? and then assessing the direction of your bounce and working with that. That was exercise one. Our sex, second exercise is in the French grip, and it's just bouncing. Between each finger nicely, okay? And take it slow. It's actually harder to do it slow. And your whole hand too. Okay, then we had the German exercise to work on 
well, the German grip exercise to work on our fingering here. And again, it's just holding the stick out about here. Actually, it's a little too far for me. Yep, it's good. The reason I put a stick underneath it is because, I mean, that's fine. It doesn't hurt or anything and I can hear it, but you want a consistent tone in your stick. The same thing as when you're practicing on a pad. You don't want... That should, <laughs> you shouldn't sound like that when you're practicing. It should just be... Okay, your stick's going to resonate a nice way. Additional grip. The same thing. You know, you can open your hand... And that's your thumb and forefinger exercise in traditional grip. It's not thumb and forefinger. It's, it's really just working on the, 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 the bounce of your thumb. But that's how you would do it in traditional grip. Like I said, I predominantly play match grip, but I do like to play around in traditional grip because it's fun. It's tradition. It looks cool. And certain feels and techniques, you know, just feel right in traditional grip. So take these exercises to your pad set or your kit Make sure you do your stretches every day, everybody. And thank you so much for clicking play. I'm JS, and I will see you next week. Take care.